Today is our annual uh, threshing day of the Humboldt and Area Vintage and Antique Club. Uh, when it started 24 years ago, there were nine individuals uh, met at a farmhouse and we decided something should be done to uh, gather and, and uh, preserve the tools and the equipment that our uh, uh, pioneers of our, in the area used so that uh, history would be not lost and uh, we could continue showing it uh, to, the, uh, to the youth of today. The vintage day was, was actually started at a farm before we ever had a site out of Bert Tiemann's and the interest uh, was so great that it's uh, been running now for at least uh, 25 years. I was uh, introduced in the, into the club about 1998 and I was a secretary of the uh, club for approximately 18 years. And of course along with that job goes the job of uh, running the concession and cleaning up just like everybody else has to do. And we have different uh, demonstrations going on throughout the day. And it's just a fun thing to do. And people can uh, wander around the yard and watch all the wood sawing and blacksmithing and stuff like that. It's, it's just interesting to see the old vehicles, the old tractors, the old cultivators. You know, it's just a thing that really interests the community. That's called an Atkinson cycle. It was invented right after the uh, auto cycle was invented. What, what was this used for? Yeah, it was mainly used for uh, running power generators. That was before they had the grid, so every little area had their own little power plant. So that's what the Brits used it for. Cool! This year we have uh, 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 some exciting events going on, uh, 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 stuff that we haven't had in the past. We have a, uh, uh, a wood carver coming out from the Shambo who's going to uh, do uh, some, uh, some crafting with his chainsaws. Hello, my name is Leroy Robillard. I'm a chainsaw carver, I've been doing it for eight years now. Uh, I first started out in log home businesses and then I moved to log furniture and Sure enough, I picked up on chainsaw carving, and I love it, and I haven't stopped since. I like the eagle and the fish. It represents where I come from up north. I see that every day. Out on the lake, when you're out fishing, they'll be there doing the same thing you are. And you'll see them diving for the walleye or whatever kind of fish they can get their hands on. But I love the eagle. That's, my hometown is named after it. The Shambo Lake Golden Eagles. And that's why I love carving the eagle. It's such a majestic bird. Okay, here we have a booboo bear. Took me a good half hour to carve it out. Another piece we have here is a howling wolf. It's howling away behind a spruce tree with the moon behind it. And another piece I have here is a salmon. I gotta do some touch-up work on it. I gotta put some burns on it to make it stand out. And that one's sold already, so it's not for sale. <laughs> I like it. It's very unique and very interesting and I've this is actually the second one I've participated in and it's it's awesome. The Vintage Society in Humboldt, I believe, is very important to the youth of today and it connects the past to the present. For kids you can just see the joy in their faces when they look at uh, particularly the farm animals and stuff like that. But uh, in our museum, we allow the kids to uh, touch anything, to sit on anything. Uh, if they just had to look at it, they, it would mean nothing to them. But this way, 
When they're able to uh, uh, touch stuff and, and, and uh, we show them how it operates, we sometimes have uh, schools coming here and we have school tours through here. And it's, uh, it's something that if we don't teach, uh, you know, they wouldn't learn it in school. And uh, the, I know the teachers in the schools really appreciate when, uh, you know, when they, we take these kids through these tours. Is this your rabbit? Uh, these rabbits? We have lots of baby rabbits, so we just bring the ones that are ready for homes and we take them to petting zoos so people want to buy them and have them for pets. Good idea. One year we had a, uh, a cow milking demonstration and, uh, you know, it was uh, the funniest thing to watch because the kids would uh, be poking their heads through the, uh, through the fence just to, they, they couldn't believe that this was where milk was coming from, you know. So events like that are, you know, are, are very educational. A local uh, uh, individual by the name of Murray Cook, he comes out every year to uh, our events and uh, he has his own uh, blacksmith shop. The guy is fantastic. He can just about uh, make anything and he does, he, he's a knife maker. He's got uh, uh, many knives that he's sold right across Canada. Uh, a very interesting individual and a, a very good smith. Well, I'm a, a tradesman for the last 50 years been working with metal my entire life, so this is just another segment, I guess you might say. I'm really impressed with tradesmen of the past, whether it's stonemasons, uh, people that work with timber, uh, blacksmithing, metalsmithing, goldsmithing, whatever it happens to be. So there's a long history, and uh, if you want to learn these skills, you just have to go further and further. Europe still has a lot more of that than we do. My wife and I were in Salt Lake City a month ago where there was 1,250 blacksmiths and about 40 demonstrators. So, you know, that's where you go to learn the, the real, uh, possibly high-end skills. Beautiful. Where are they going to go on? And this is a practice piece. They're all, everything here is going on my gate. On, on, on my gate? gate, yeah. Wow. This is another element for the gate. The sunflower is going on the oh, gate. Oh, so. beautiful. Beautiful. These are show and tell items, actually. They're elements for a gate at home. And these are to fit into a, an oval about 22 inches by about 12. And so there's a number of them. So I make elements during the winter when I'm busy at the welding school at home on weekends and evenings I'll work on this stuff and then put it together in the summer when I can be outside. And how are you going to hook this on? Like weld it's going to weld it in four spots. Oh, wow. So I forged a frog a couple weeks ago and, and uh, lily pads and kind of neat, eh? <laughs> that is awesome. You know, for a living a guy repaired and uh, fabricated and all that kind of stuff and I think it's the creative part of the equation that's attractive to do something that at the end of the day have something that you didn't have at the start of the day. I'm from Humboldt and I'm an IT guy at the Humboldt Hospital. So as a computer guy we like we like toys and uh, this is just a hobby we started here with me and uh, some friends, Derek Schultz, Vaughn Mentors and people like that from Humboldt and we have a uh, small group called the Humboldt Remote Control Model Association and uh, we've been sort of active together for a few years and we've basically park fly but some of us have drones and some of us have helicopters and some of us have little warbirds and fun stuff like that. We're going to throw the drone up and we're going to let somebody look through the goggles and uh, see what the camera sees. So we'll pick somebody from the crowd and they can look through the, the goggles and it'll be awesome. If I would lose my drone, I would just turn off my controller and the drone would land right where it took off. Because it's all GPS. What to stay 
I think without an organization like this, I don't think the people would appreciate where we are today. If they think back uh, where their grandparents and parents possibly, you know, were farming and look at it today, they would have to sit back and realize what hard work it was as a pioneer compared to today when you sit in a nice tractor with an iPod playing some beautiful music. <laughs> When uh, a group of kids come out here from the school and you show them about thrashing and et cetera, et cetera, they're just amazed. And they just sit and watch the grain go through the thrash machine and come out at the other end as a whole product. And they are just amazed by it. Not only the students, but the teachers too. Because a lot of the teachers are young and they've never been exposed to that as well. And even watching the, the flour and the wheat being grind, and it comes out as a little bag of flour. Like that just amazes people. Like you go into the store and buy a loaf of bread and you think nothing of it. But it has to come from somewhere. We've had uh, politicians come here and said this is one of the, uh, one of the Humboldt's best kept secret because uh, they were simply amazed at the amount of stuff that a volunteer group could do and accumulate and, and maintain. And uh, you know, we're very proud of that, uh, that uh, fact that we are, are totally uh, uh, independent and, uh, and uh, can keep this place going. If you have program ideas that you'd like to see on Max TV Local On Demand, write us at max.local at sastail.com.